Hi guys, welcome to the drag multiple shapes exercise. Um, we've previously done a dragging a shape exercise uh, before and, and this is what we ended up with. We had a circle that started in the middle of the canvas and then when we clicked on it we could drag it around. If we clicked outside nothing happened but when we click in the circle um, the position of the circle uh, matches the mouse position um, which looks like we're dragging it. So um, I just want to recap on how we did that. Um, there is that video, so if you haven't watched that video, watch that video to get a better understanding. But just to refresh everyone, we had a variable that was called grabbed that had a true or false um, in it. Um, and we had the shape X and shape Y positions. Um, we positioned the shape X and we positioned the shape in the middle to begin with in the setup function. Um, so we set those variables to be half the width and half the height. And then um, we draw the ellipse inside the draw function using the shape x and shape y variables. Yeah, so that positions it in the center of the screen to begin with. Then when you press down on the mouse, we test whether the, um, whether the mouse is inside the shape. It's a circle, so we use this method here, which you can find out more about in that video. And then when you, if you're inside the circle, we set grabbed, which was false, we set that to true. Um, otherwise, we set it to false. I can actually delete that line, but yes, we set it to true if you've pressed inside the shape. Um, when you release the mouse, grabbed always goes back to false. So that in the mouse dragged function, so every time the mouse is dragged, if grabbed is true, so that means that you've click, clicked down in the shape and you've started dragging, grabbed will be true and you haven't released the mouse. Um, then we set the shape X and Y position to the mouse X and mouse Y position. Okay, so that is what we get here. So the, what we're going to explain in this tutorial is, I'm not going to go into the co those concepts, but I'm just going to show you how you can run it out across a few different, uh, across multiple objects. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use some arrays. So instead of just having one grabbed um, value, and one shape X and one shape Y, we're gonna have six because we're gonna draw six shapes on the page and we're gonna use our variables here to store six values and we're gonna store them in an array. And then we're gonna access them by accessing those particular um, values in that array. So let me show you how we will do that. Um, so here is our code. Let's just, is this refreshing? Get rid of that. Um, okay, you can see here that we've got six shapes here. Yeah? These are yellow rectangles with red borders. Okay. So the first thing um, that you can see is that we have, just like I talked about we were going to do, we've got a grabbed array, which is all set to false. Let's leave that for now. We've got an X position array and a Y position array. Yeah, you could simplify this and and have just sort of a an array of object values, which is how I might do it. But I wanted to separate it out so that we could explain, so that you guys could get a grip on arrays before we did that, um, because the other way that I just mentioned would be using an array of arrays or an array of objects, and um, I don't want to confuse you at the moment. So as it is, we're just going to save all the X positions for the shape in this X array, and we're going to save all the Y positions um, in the Y array. Um, so in our setup function, just like in the previous one, um, we're going to set the initial positions, and we're going to do that by setting the first position, the first rectangle, and remember array, arrays start at zero, so the first number in an array is is you can access via the array and this bracket notation and the index zero. So we're gonna set the first value in the array to be 150. So if we just did here, let's just print out X. So we're gonna print out the array X. Okay, so it should have, when we print it out here, it should have one value in it. 150. Yeah. So let's see if that happened. Yes, here's an array. Hmm, it doesn't have one value in it. Why is that? 
Yes, here we go. Very strange, that. Okay. I, I, I ran into this before, but when I, when in, in P5, if you print it out, and then you dive in using this, this um, down arrow, the array is not what you expect. So what it's saying is what I said. It's got one value in it when we print it out, 150, because what we've done is we've set the first index of that array to be 150. So it's only got one in there, yeah? If we print it out after we've set the second set of values for the second rectangle, it should have two values in it. So you can see it has 150 and then comma 450. So it has 150 and it has 450. If we print the Y, it should have two values, 150 and 150. So here we set the Ys here. There we go, 150 and 150. Okay. So what we're doing in this in this spot here is we're setting the initial positions. So if we um, let's print it out here. Next. Y. If we print it out here, we've got a full array. Yeah, so they're all our X positions, six positions for our rectangles, and they're all our Y positions, six positions. Okay? And then we're going to draw the rectangles on the screen. So our shapes are going to have a stroke um, that is red, the stroke weight is going to be 10, and the fill is going to be yellow. Okay? And then we're going to draw the first rectangle here. So let's just get rid of these. And in order to draw the rectangle, we're just going to use the value that we've saved in this array here. See that array? We want it to be 150, so we want the first value in the X array and the first value in the Y array. And we've got our rectangle. Yeah. We could change that and we could get the second value. And it would draw the second rectangle. So we're going to do that. We're going to draw all six of these rectangles. Um, so I'm just going to uncomment those. And we've got six rectangles all drawn using the values in that array. Hooray. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is that, remember in our previous, um, you know, in our dragging a single shape, we need to test when we press the mouse whether we're inside the rectangle. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to test the top. We're going to test if we're in the top rectangle, you know, because this will be these will be layered up. Yeah, you draw from the you draw the first the first line gets drawn, then the second line gets drawn over the top of it. So the the top rectangle I want to test for, because if we click down um, and we start moving one that's underneath it first, it'll be a bit confusing. So the top value is the first thing that we'll check. So we're gonna we're gonna test that using one of the um, helper functions that I wrote, and you guys can use that are within the um, GitHub um, in one of the other exercises. I can't remember exactly what it is. But this just tests if the mouse is inside a certain rectangle. So you put in the X and Y and width and height of the rectangle and then you and then it will test, it'll give you a true or false to test whether it's inside that. So if the mouse is inside the top rectangle, this is the top rectangle, yeah? You're going to use the X and Y values of the top rectangle. Um, and the width and height is the same for all. Then we're going to set grabbed five the 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 array um, the last value in the grabbed array to true. So up here, this is going to equal true. So it's just a way to save true or false for grab the gra our grabbed variable for six objects. Yeah. So we're just going to do it within that array, and then. When the mouse is released, we, they'd all get set back. They'd always, when the mouse is released, then grabbed is equal to false, yeah, because you don't want things to move around when we're not pressing down on the mouse. So we're going to test, so we can, so we can print out, um, let's print out the grabbed array here. Yeah. If you're looking at this line here, just leave that for a second, I'm going to come to that, okay. So if we print grabbed, you can see that it's true, false, 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 because we click down in the first object. If we click down in the second object, the array will be 
false, true, false, 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 false. Yeah. So it's true that we're grabbing the second object. If we click on the fifth object, it's going to be true that we're grabbing the fifth object. Okay. Nothing's going to happen at the moment because we haven't allowed, we haven't done anything on the dragged, in the mouse dragged function. So within the mouse dragged function, we just want to set if an, a shape is grabbed, we want to change the position of that shape to the mouse X and Y position. So if the top shape is grabbed, then we just set the X and Y position for that shape in the X and Y array to the mouse X and the mouse Y in exactly the same way that we did for the previous grabbing um, uh, tutorial where we just grabbed one object. We're just doing the same thing but we're going to do it for all six objects yeah? and we're going to update the values within the, within the arrays. Okay. So let's see if that works. Yay! We're now moving our objects around. Now you can see that as these are layered. So if I click in here where you can see that there's this rectangle underneath, there's also this rectangle on the top, and if I and we can include this rectangle here. So I, if I click right here, I'm actually inside three different rectangles, but I just want to move the top rectangle first. That is how that is because we're gonna test these things in order in the one statement. So once the mouse is in the top rectangle, we're going to set grab to true and then nothing else here is going to run. Okay, We're just going to drag that top shape. So if we click here, we're not going to get anything unexpected. We're dragging that top shape. And if we click here, we're dragging that top shape. And then we can drag the next one. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is, I am um, actually doing this video in, in regards to a question directly in the tech support, which is sort of, it, it has some images um, uh, that get dragged around and underneath you find a sort of button, I guess, um, or another little image. So um, what I've done is I've also hidden, drawn a hidden object. So this hidden object gets drawn on every draw function. So that's our hidden object. It's got no stroke. Um, if the hidden object is selected, so if it, um, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna make it that if you click on it, it changes color. So if the hidden object is selected, yeah, which I've just saved as a variable here, at the moment it's false. It's a certain color, and if if it's not, then it's another color. And then I'm just gonna draw this ellipse. It's just gonna be a little circle, 30 by 30 wide, and it's at, at x 750 and y 150. So it's in the top right hand corner of the screen. And as it's drawn underneath all the rectangles, it's hidden by the rectangles. So that's why I have this line in here because we're also going to test if the mouse is in the if you, when you click, and the mouse is within that hidden object, then we're going to toggle the hidden object variable. So the hidden object selected is going to then equal whatever the hidden object selected isn't. Okay, so now we can find that. Hold on, let's refresh. Oh. Our hidden object really is hidden. Where is our hidden object? There it is, okay. Pretend this is the first time you've seen it. Ah, oh, where is our hidden object? Da -da 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 -da. There it is. And then when we click on it, we want to do something. We want to turn it into um, green. And we click on it again, it turns to blue. So you could make that be the button to your next screen or whatever. But there you go. There's a hidden object underneath multiple dragging shapes. So um, I know that was a long video. I know it was slightly complex to explain, um, but uh, hopefully that helps some of you do something like this. Okay.